It is October 1st, 2024. Welcome to the Aries Cloud Asian Python user group community meeting. Um, bunch of things to go over, new maintainers, um, progress on the OWF um, transition and next steps. Um, we'll talk issues in PRs and have an open discussion, I guess, at the end of that. So we'll see how our time goes. Um, Reminder, we're recording the call. It'll be posted on this new website um, meeting page, uh, new, uh, new starting URL for this. So we'll switch over to that starting next meeting. Uh, reminder, this is a Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust Meeting, LFDT meeting. So the Linux Foundation Antitrust Policy is in effect and the LFDT Code of Conduct is in effect. I think... Any uh, anyone want to introduce themselves? Anyone have any announcements or any um, agenda items they'd like to see included on this meeting? All right. Feel free to jump in at any time. Um, okay, so new maintainers. We've got three new maintainers: uh, Maritz, Thiago, and Patrick. Um, were added last week uh, with the approval of um, the rest of the maintainers. We have a process, first time we followed that process to add new maintainers, worked well, so that's good. And glad to have new folks on board. Um, Akapai to OWF. Okay, so as of the last meeting, I guess it was the day before, um, we uh, went to the OWF TAC, um, and Akapai was accepted as an impact project there. Um, we have this PR, um, which outlines the process we're following to move it. Um, hopefully folks have seen it and gone through to figure out what we're doing, but um, basically, um, New repo will be called Akapai. Um, the project at OWF will be Akapai or Akapai with the dash and the lowercase y. Either of those will work. Um, <clears throat> we will be renaming Aries Cloud Agent source folder to Akapai Agent um, as the name Akapai is already taken at PyPy. And then the repositories um, that are sub-projects sub of Akapai will have um, re repos prefixed by Akapai Dash, so Akapai plugins. We're going to keep the akapai.org domain name for um, the documentation, and plugins.akapai.org will remain as well. Um, we will keep updating this issue as we uh, as we move through this and and other things happen and change them. Um, <clears throat> there we will retain the hyperledger uh, the redirect on the hyperledger site for as long as possible, hopefully for um, quite a while. Uh, so hyperledger slash Aries dash cloud agent dash Python will redirect automatically to the open wallet Akapai repository. And then what we will do is um, continue to maintain a new repository at hyperledger that from which will produce the LTS um, any any requirements for publishing an 11 and 12 releases, all with the existing artifacts names. So it looks like we're able to do that. So we'll continue to do those um, pushing. And then the new Akapai agent at PyPy will be pushed, uh, published out of the OWF. Um, does anyone, uh, any of the maintainers or anyone know of any reason for doing an 11 or 12 LTS release right now? Is there any um, features either within Aries or um, vulnerabilities that need to be addressed in an 11 or 12 release? I, I haven't seen anything, but I wondered if anyone else had any opinions on that. 
I don't think so. We had LTS releases. I can't yeah. think of anything that's okay since then. I haven't seen anything that that reminds me to do that. Um, we have updated the repo. Well, as of the merging of the zero. Uh, 101 RC0 release, the README has been updated to talk about the Akapai to OWF move. And um, and we've got, I originally was going to have a, an Akapai to OWF MD file, but I think this issue is a better place to track it. So I've decided, so I just made it this. I have to update this to say um this task here to say that the um, this issue will be the place to monitor as we move through it. Um, we have almost completed a release 101. Um, speaking of which, we'll get to that now. Um, we have RC0 out there. Does anyone see any reason not to do a, a 101 final at this mo at this point? Um, the only thing is there's been a problem with the interop AATH oh, right. test from yeah. yesterday that it would be nice to have those actually passing, but yeah, shell, did you, um, so that came about because of an upgrade in AATH shell. I did a revert and, um, I think that's ready to go. Can you approve that in the AATH repo, um, Patrick? I did shall then want to reply. Uh... Yeah, I was just going to say I'll do that right now. I thought Patrick had had uh, had uh, approved it, but yeah, he doesn't have a he doesn't have any power in AATH. He's just a a mere contributor. Yeah, yeah I'm just. Uh, I got it. I got it. Uh, I'll I'll flicker. How you call that? Once you um, merge it, let us know, and I assume Patrick or Jamie or somebody will kick off tests to see if that solved the Akapai problem. Interesting. Yep. Uh, interesting uh, the, that that caused problems. Um, is it just that it it it's not that there was code problems? It was a dependency screw up, the, like dependency um, mismatch. Is that it? I think it has yeah. to do with. With building the requirements file yeah. and yeah. Akapai setting its own requirement and then the they yeah, both use that library, but Akapai is stuck on major version two of that library. And then so even though it works in AATH, it doesn't work for Akapai and then there's a conflict. I think it's but... one of the only libraries that both of them use. But it's not a. It's not that the functionality doesn't work. It's that there the dependencies under that library are conflict with one another. Yeah, and Akapai, Akapai can't upgrade it because it does have problems upgrading it. So oh, otherwise we could have just upgraded it in Akapai and everything would have been fine. But okay, so it's that's to do with the demo. What does Prompt Toolkit do? <laughs> I don't know exactly. I think the demo uses it quite a bit. That's oh, interesting. We could have saddled isn't this it... on Ian, except he went to France. Well, isn't it for like command line stuff? Which is yeah. why demo would use it. It's for yeah. fancy command line stuff, but definitely doesn't affect the code at all. But yeah. Okay, well, we have to upgrade that, I guess, at some point, because we should. But once we complete that and we get the tests working again, are we good with a 101 final? Patrick? Uh, I just wanted to stress one PR I'm trying to get in. Uh, I really appreciate that if we could get it in. It's uh, 3261. We, we've been doing a lot of uh, back and forth. And I think it's in a good yeah. spot. It's passing all the tests except that one, that one test. So data integrity routes. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty significant. I think it, it's going to unlock a lot of, 
not a feature okay. for TDW and VCDM 2.0 and signing yeah. the docs and whatnot. So yeah. Um, Jamie, Daniel, um, do we think including this brings any risk? We should go to an RC1, or do you think including that will be safe enough because it's new? Um, so I don't have a direct answer to that question yet, but I do actually have a different PR that I, I I'm hoping to get out in a release soon. Well, then you got to wait till we ask answer this one. <laughs> well, that's the, the, the question I, I mean to ask is, do we go ahead and push out 1.01 as is, and then just have another release shortly thereafter that contains the new features that we want to push for okay what's the other one you want to see pushed uh the let's see what was it called um shoot let me look it up here um the 3260 uh enable refreshing did endpoint using mediator info um it's been merged already oh um but it wasn't in the first release candidate that went out so so again my my approach is that we would include anything that's been merged. Like the default behavior is RC or the next, whether it's RC one or one zero one would include anything merged. So. Okay. Um, I guess then to go back to the original question, um, yeah. I think an RC one would be a good idea. Okay. All right. Um, Patrick and Daniel and Jamie, if you guys could push on this data integrity routes. Um, when you say the one test that's failing, is that because of the AATH thing or is it something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go at the bottom, you'll see it's just the, um, if you scroll down, it's really just the, it can't build the image for the BDBD okay. interrupt. Okay. Um, all the other ones are good. And to, to the question, uh, I, really don't see how this would break anything because it's really adding new functionalities. Uh, the okay. PR previous to that about the multi-key management did some changes, uh, but that's already merged and yeah, it didn't seem that it broke anything so far. So That's fine. We'll do an RC1. Um, I would like people to push on that and let's get um, 101 out after that. Um, so... As soon as that's merged, as soon as I see that one get merged, um, <clears throat> actually, so we've, we've digressed from where we were, but we're into issues and PRs, but why not there? Um, these three, are, are do we anticipate these being significant? I didn't want to do, um, I, I noticed this one failing, but that's probably the BDD failures. Um, this one, obviously, the regression tests don't do anything with, but then again, it's only a super minor one. Um, but I wondered if a developer could at least try it out. And this one, I didn't know at all. This seems like a big deal. And somebody would have to go through the demo, I guess, to, to find out. Thoughts? Yeah, we might like, as well get yeah. those in. <laughs> It feels like the Postgres one would be fine. I don't know. Uh, but it's I got think... a whole number here. 70. Yeah. But That's it's like plus one. It's like the external database, right? Like as, as far yeah. as I know, like okay. I think NASCAR can handle it. All right. Okay. I remember going from 14 to 15. It was a big deal. That's all. Oh, okay. I have no idea what these, you know, what it actually means internally. I just remember 14 to 15 was a big deal. Okay. Um, I'll leave those um, to get merged by uh, somebody else to decide if they want to just merge them based on the tests or if they want to do anything with them. So I'll be looking for these top four. And once those are either merged or closed, um, I'll do an RC1. Does that sound right? Hey, uh, my fireworks are back. Awesome. Okay. Let's go back to where I was.
3250. Okay. So 101, um, we've got our deprecation notice. We also have the deprecation notice about the 160 issue credential V1 and, and present proof V1. All of those are notices are in there. Um, we'll continue processing um, Occupy PRs. As we've mentioned, we're going to release, this should say 101. So I might as well go into edit mode now um, and say... One zero one. Oh no, that would be one one. That is correct. Um, with the protocols removed, so definitely, the, uh, and that release with these protocols removed may happen at Hyperledger, depending on how fast or or OWF. Um, I see why we don't have more of these. Whoops. <clears throat> Okay, um, before the move, prepare PRs to implement the changes. So the plan now is um, Jamie and I will at least will be doing at least two PRs that will implement the changes to change paths from Hyperledger to the new repository name. Um, I'll, I'll be doing text changes. I'll do the changes to how we publish things, probably. Um, might even entail changes to some of the scripts um, for publishing that we use and so on. Jamie, you're going to focus on GitHub action changes. I presume you would also do this Akapi plugins. So anything technical that I wouldn't be able to handle, um, or sorry, not sorry, Akapi agent change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So those two PRs will get done. At that moment, we would then move the repo to OWF. And then once it's moved and before we do anything else, we will create a new repo, Aries Cloud Agent Python LTS in Hyperledger. That is a fork of the transferred OWF repo. Um, and that will be used to... Um, for documentation changes and um, the source of any LTS releases that we ever have to do. Um, it's all of the changes to that repo will not be migrated back to, um, uh, will not be pushed back. Uh, Patrick? Um, Sorry, is Hyperledger still going to exist, or is it's it's moved to the Linux Foundation? I, I'm a bit confused about this. Yeah, the organization will still exist. The GitHub okay. organization, Hyperledger, okay. will continue to exist, and so we're take basically we're taking advantage of that. Right. That makes sense. Looks like I have a few more of these to do. Um, let's see. Okay, so move the repo, create the fork. Um, there was some debate about this. Um, Wade's confident that we would actually not have to. Um, my thought was based on the naming in GHCR that we would have to rename it back when we did an LTS to Aries Foundation Python, Wade, Wade thinks we don't, so that's great. If we don't, then we won't ever do that because as soon as we rename the old repo to Aries Foundation Python, we would lose the automatic redirect, which we don't want to lose if we can avoid it. So hopefully we don't ever have to do that. We can do an LTS release from the dash LTS fork and we don't have to uh, rename it back. Um, as mentioned, once 012 is end of life, we will archive the Hyperledger repo. Note that 012 is, uh, we don't have, 012 is the latest LTS at this moment. We have not declared a one uh, major version one LTS. So until we do that, there's no clock on 012. So, um, it is the sooner the better we get that clock started, but it will be at least nine months. Um, 
once we do that, we will merge the PRs um, that we prepare for the move to OWF <coughs> and produce a new release for OWF, whatever that may be, 1.1, 1.11, depends on um, how long it takes us and whether we've done a 1.1 release at Hyperledger or not. In my ideal world, we would um, do a 101. So we'll do our RC1, 101 RC1, then we will do a 101, then we will do the move. So ideally that, you know, sometime later this week, early next week, we do the move and we do the one 1.1 out of OWF, but we'll just have to see how how much effort it is to um, to do the PRs necessary, the the move preparation PRs. So we'll see how that goes. Um, any other questions or comments on this transition plan? Okay, well, that was easy. Now I gotta find where that, hmm. All right, it didn't open a new page, so. No, it did, I, I opened a new page, hmm. Now I gotta remember where that Atlassian.net link was since I didn't save it. <sighs> Give me a moment, hang on. Um, I think I tracked it down. I just pasted a link into the chat for you. All right. Me too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next up, we need an OWF TAC representative. Um, I would like to put my name forward with that. Uh, is anyone else want to be that? Volunteers. So the one kind of like concern I have on this is uh, the OWF tech meets at the current Aries working group time, which I, know. I, I know. assume would be the same time that we'd hope for for the wallet interop sig. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Yeah. Okay. I've been thinking the same thing. I suspect we would have to move the, I don't know, Aries working group. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other than that, back to the original question. Um, <clears throat> are are people okay with me taking on that tack role? All right. Any objections? I don't want to coerce people. The check will be sent out in the mail. The money transfers for the bribes, just to be clear. There will be no bribes. Okay. All right. Barring that, I will step forward and let um, uh, Sean know about that. <clears throat> Here's some terrible chat GPT suggestions for a logo. Any other ideas on a logo? I forgot that we had this one, our Acapug. And so then I tried this one out of ChatGPT and that's pretty bad. That's a bad looking pug. Um, this actually wasn't too bad, except I tried to get it to keep change this shield to a circle. 
and it couldn't figure out how to do that and gave me entirely new logos, which I didn't really like. Any comments on any of these, or are they just not even worth looking at? Is there a... Can we just use the Aries logo? That's an interesting idea. I, I saw that. Uh, Sean not, offered not this these one. services. Not, uh, not this one. I don't like this one. Not this one? The, the, pre, the original one. Uh, ah. I, don't <laughs> I don't know. That's this funny. One, the, the I don't even know what I could. Yeah, I'd have to remind myself. <laughs> oh, I know where I could see it. Nope. Not even there. Uh, it's the Mandela effect. <laughs> Never. Yeah, this one. I kind of like it. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Ooh, that's not a bad idea at all. I see. It's kind of reverse order. All right. I'll uh, pursue that as a possibility. <clears throat> I don't see any merit in any of these ones. I just put them there for the hell of it. Um, the first one isn't bad, actually. That was my thought as well. Um, that if any of them, it's not that bad. Um, as I said, I tried to get chat GTP or chat GPT is really funny with images is that if you ever suggest a keep everything except change one factor of it, it gives you an entirely new one that's totally different, um, which is frustrating. <laughs> what's, wrong with the, what's wrong with the third one? Then? That's kind of the problem oh. with AI, right? It, it just uh, doesn't give you iterations. That's why yeah. you have to hide this. Yeah, it's kind of funny um, that it doesn't do that. Um, yeah, so all I, I, I wanted was this except um, no shield and this just a circle. Yeah, I, I, I find it's okay. I find it's a bit. Uh, there's a bit of a lot going on, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I like I get it. bit simple things. Yeah, you you um, need like one of them to be Python and then one of them to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot yeah. of. Things, so. yeah. All right, like I'll uh, I'll uh, anyone <clears throat> anyone interested in logo design. We used to have Alex, but he uh, left as of today, so he's not on our team. So <clears throat> I can uh, to look at it. Can I have a go with ChatGPT once my my twenty four hour limit is done? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I've done a few logos, but they've all been uh, what is it like VTuber style per se, where it's like the text word or like the words and then you do like tweaking with the text and add things around it yeah well would you like to do some more i could give this stab and do, uh, throw it in, in when do we need to decide um i mean the sooner the better but <clears throat> there's again there's no timeline in any of these things Right. I was going to say we can, you know, give it a week, then everyone bring yeah. an option and just vote. Well, I heard Colton say he's going to take a shot at it and come back. Perfect. We can have a pool Perfect. in Discord. But, Discord. Uh, it, it doesn't have to just be me. Everyone can uh, give a stab <laughs> you know, at it. And uh, then we have a bunch of options to look through next exactly. meeting, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I thought I had put this in, and maybe this didn't get in before they froze the, the website. Um, yeah. Once we, once we choose one, we all get an open badge with the new logo. There you go. Um, uh, there is a new editing. woo Hopefully it works the same. We should check and see if live editing is working. Somebody else should edit at the same time. Um, here's the new uh, link.
Let me put that in chat. In case anyone is, <clears throat> excuse me, not already on OWF's um, Discord, um, please join. <clears throat> there is an Akapai channel there, and so we want to start using it. Um, here's a mission statement. Uh, I took, I, of course, again, used chat GPT and a conversation I had about other things with Akapai, tweaked it slightly. Again, I don't know if anyone here is interested in mission statements. I'm not, but please take a read through and see if there's anything there that makes you vomit or if there's anything that you think is horribly missing. I mean, it feels a little bit on the wordy side to me personally. Yeah. Um, it's a, a bit of a buzzword salad, just toss everything in there kind of a thing. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but the thought of starting from scratch terrified me. Uh, I, I could try it. I mean, mission statements are, they're going to be a little bit of, you know, buzzword soup. Yeah. To, but. Maybe hang slightly on. fewer would be an improvement. I don't know. Hang on one second. I'll just try that real quick. I think that's fine. I mean, it is, you know, pretty generic, but you know, it's <clears> kind <throat> of what it's kind of what we're doing too. Like, uh, hey, look at that! We shortened it by a line and a half. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, We've done the open PRs. We've done um, we've talked about those. Um, did TDW resolve? Or are we ready to merge this? Jamie, you're finished it. Um, yeah, I updated it based on Daniel's comments. I don't think it's like a hurry to get in just with the there's yeah. change going on to the spec and stuff still but i think it should be good okay we're not going to do these two until at least after 101 daniel you're good with that yeah um i i think there might be a little bit of discussion discussion worthy on on the issue credential present proof especially if if i'm gonna hand off like testing to the vc gov okay. team yeah um so I guess as a quick update, um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I've uh, I took the the protocol code, moved it into plugins. So the new plugins are are created there within a PR on on the Occupy plugins repo, um, and there are a few points where we were directly referencing uh, v1 versions of the protocol within Occupy core, um, and I, I've listed them out here. So uh, credential revocation status notifications. Um, uh, and updating the, the status within the record itself. Uh, mm -hmm. That was being done directly by the revocation manager using the, the, uh, the record classes for V1. I right. modified that to just um, emit an event, and then the plugins provide an event listener for, for that okay. to do the, the record update. So that's taken care of. Um, the other one that I've taken care of is the proof of extraction um, was using V1 and V2 records. I just added another little bit of a dash of, of genericness on top of those records so that it could not directly depend on them. Um, the one aspect that I haven't addressed yet is the ability to attach uh, a credential offer or a presentation request from the V1 protocols to an out-of-band invitation. 
Um, I assume that's something we want to retain. Uh, so I, I, I did do some thinking on, on how to go about enabling that to happen still going forward. Um, Mm -hmm. and I jotted down a few thoughts in a comment, um, it's not super fresh on my mind. So, and, and I'm, I'm sure this isn't going to be like super relevant for anybody until they've loaded the context themselves into their own brains. Um, Yeah. but, uh, yeah, I, I think there's some workarounds, um, just requires a little bit more time and attention to, to get it there. So. Thinking about that, are those controller tasks? Like, doesn't the controller do that? Um, yes. Um, and the, the solution that I've come up with is essentially just provide another couple of routes to the controller to enable that. Um, the problem that we had in the implementation as it stood today was that the handling of, of attaching a request or an offer was, um, boiled down a little bit in, in the out of band invitation creation step. Um, and so you just put in credential offer as the type um, and, you know, a minimal set of details. And then it would go and fill things in according to whether it was a V1 or a V2 version of Mm -hmm. uh, the protocol. Um, so, yeah, that that logic is the stuff that needs to move out of core, of course. Okay. Just a matter of interest, could it stay in with a note beside it saying um, V1 is, in order to trigger this, you'd have to have the plugin installed and we just don't mess with it? Um, Or is that too ugly? it's a fair question, at least, um, it would require like conditional imports, uh, Oh, which is a little ugly, um, okay. doable, but a little ugly. Patrick? Um, so I'm actually looking at, at out of band presentation request V2 right now. Um, I'm not sure I'm following exactly what the, the problem is uh, here. So let's say I create my uh, present proof V2 within the ND attachment. I get the presentation request ID. I put that as an attachment and my out of band invitation. Uh, what's the problem that you're uh, trying to solve here? Is, uh, is there something I, I don't Yeah. understand? So the invitation creator for, for out of band invitations, um, Yeah. will take that presentation ID and do a, a record lookup. But if we've moved the record class out of, of Akapai core, then it's got nothing to reference, um, in order to look up the one presentations. Right. So if I use the in the attachment on presentation or issue credential v2, when I attach it to Audubon, it's actually going to load the v1 object of that filter. Something like that. Uh, not quite. I can point you to some code, but I'll have to go and dig Sure. it up. But yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, the second question I had was for testing this. Um, Sheldon, um, <clears throat> would we be able to <clears throat> preface any issue credential present proof V1 AATH test with a reloading that uses the plugin configuration so that everything should still work with the plugin? Is that Is that a viable way to, is that likely to more or less work? I believe so, unless I'm misunderstanding something. I think that should work fine. Okay. And Daniel, does that make sense to you? We would just. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that seems like it would make sense because the, the test harness is like spinning up and spinning down containers Exactly. with different parameters. So yeah, it would just be a, a matter of adding in the plugin, uh, you know, flag for the issue credential V1 and present proof V1. protocols for those tests. Yeah. Okay. With the possible caveat of exactly what you've got here, which is if we're doing it out of band, um, we could have some trouble because of this. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then all of these, I think, are... <clears throat> what about this one, 
Patrick, where does this sit? Actually, yeah, let's go through all of these. Hold on, let um, me see. So, so this one, uh, once we merge the data and curiosity, I will close it. It's sort of okay. Yes, but better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one is Moritz tied to this one, so we're going to leave those two. Um, what are we going to do with this one, P Patrick? You've had the most engagement with Theritra on uh, this. So he suggests the way, so the problem here is that when you want to issue a credential using DidWeb, you can provide which verification method you want to display and the options. Mm -hmm. um, and using the old endpoints, when you provide this verification method, it doesn't, like Akapai doesn't do anything about it. It just prints that string in the verification options. It actually used the issuer value to find the key. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that he's having is that during the proof presentation exchange, this step that the holder needs to provide a verification method happens in the middle of an exchange through a, a sort of uh, automated process. And there's no way to have a, a manual step to provide this verification method ID to put on the presentation proof. Um, so what he suggested is to have a sort of uh, legal ha hacky bit of code that's going to resolve the the holder did, which is a did web, go look at the verification methods from the did document and auto select the one that seems to match what is expected here. Um, so it kind of works, you know. Uh, it's hacky. It kind of works. Um, I'm, I cannot think of a better solution for present proof uh, v2 at the moment for this scenario. Uh, am I the only one not hearing you? Sorry about that. Um, okay. Any What's holding up merging this? If we can't think of a better way to do it, I don't know. My my last comment, I really said uh, it's fine. Um, I guess I could say like, uh, yeah, I approve it. It's just, I don't know. It's not something that I need. It's not a use case that I need. It is a bit hacky and it, it does have a sort of bit of code that's kind of undocumented that could have some weird effect down the line. You know, like let's say there's a problem and it, it creates some kind of problem. Um but yeah. Okay. Um, I think Daniel had another idea, but I, I don't remember exactly what it was and it would require more work, but. I don't remember what it was either at this point. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, I'll have to find out the status of this and then see what we do. I think it'd be really, it, it's not good that this went so long without being touched, obviously. Yeah. And now it's got conflicts and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'll follow up with Aritra and Northern Block to see what they want to do about it. Okay. And, and finally, this one. Yeah, gotcha. so this one, uh, so again, I'm going to open a new one to, so I, I went sort of backwards, you know, I started with VCDM 2.0, then VCDI, then some multi-key management. Uh, so now that I've got the multi-key management, the VCDI stuff, and I will redo another one that has uh, data model testing, uh, leveraging the, the PR that we're going to merge the data okay. uh, integrity roads. Uh, and I will add this. So the, the data integrity routes enable you to do VCDM 2.0 issuance. The only thing is that Akapai itself is not going to do any validation on the input. So you kind of need to provide a valid VCDM 2.0 as these specific endpoints here uh, do add a sort of data model validation on the input. So it will specifically make sure that what comes out of it is a conformant verifiable credential. Okay. Hmm. I think we need some, uh, you and I need to sit down and figure out um, how to document and publish about how to use these new features. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once we get this work done, let's sit down and think about that. Yeah, maybe a demo or yeah, exactly. <clears throat> maybe do a separate, um, you know, a separate app in the demo to say W three C. Yeah, I did. I did add. Uh, there was something I started with the Postman. If you, if you click on Postman, I did uh, right. the, the right. directory. So it's a, it's one of the yeah. directories there. So I, I did yeah. start. So I could probably re revisit this. Uh, actually, that's just the collection. But yeah, I was referring to that in a demo somewhere. Okay. Uh, and they could put a few example like how to sign a dead document, how to like da 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 da. -da. Okay. All right, let's let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any issues we want to bring up? This one says sounded bad. Oh. Um, let's do this one and Jean Philippe. I'll call on you next. Um, Daniel, uh, this one. Yeah, to give a quick summary. Um the seed parameter when you start up Akapai with it, it makes the assumption um that the uh that the did generated from the seed is posted to the network that you're connected to. Um mm -hmm. I don't think that's necessarily a bad assumption. Um but it does lead us into a scenario where if you haven't actually uh published your your did to the network yet, um and you attempt to create a schema or or another ledger object, um you will create it, it'll get stored in your wallet. Um, but when you go to publish, it fails. And then you go through the, the dance of making sure that your data actually is on the ledger after that. And then if you go back and try to make the same schema again, um, it'll fail because there's a record of it in your wallet already from the previous attempt. Which um, comes back to the whole two-step, uh, two-phase commit on storing yeah. something in the wallet, but not getting it on the ledger. Right. Um, I, I think there are, you know, um, there are, there's a direction we could go where we talk about two phase commit and stuff. I think there might be uh, a middle ground of just on startup of Akapai, actually mm -hmm. do a quick verification that the did is posted to the network. Because um, mm -hmm. that just eliminates a whole class of, of yeah, bad exactly. configuration issues that you could enter into. Um, so, yeah, that's... It's it also yeah. sounds like me like the order should be like it should post on the ledger before it stores it locally and make sure that this happens um because there could be other reason why it can't reach the ledger temporarily you know it could be a network issue or anything and like it should receive a confirmation that the transaction is posted before it saves it locally um or if the record has a state that reflects that it's pending as opposed to Exactly. It to be I think that's probably the better way to go is pending yeah. and then it gets marked because there is no, you know, if you've got multiple instances of Akapai, now you've got a, a data problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and there's no guarantee that once you post it to the ledger that uh, it actually gets saved to the database afterwards. Yeah. <clears throat> you wind up back to the same problem in reverse. But could it just... They, yeah, uh, no, maybe that's not. Like if the if the schema is on the ledger, it's got you did. You can just like save it. If it's not, yeah, and there's there's wallet. actually an endpoint I believe in in the controller for like mm -hmm. getting back to a state where it's on the uh, it's on the ledger, and I just need it in my wallet now. Um, like you yeah. can do that. Uh, but yeah, there was okay. another issue. It's not exactly the same, but it still has to do with the startup phase. Uh, so the, the scenario was that <clears throat> I start my agent with a seed. I have the, you know, it's on the ledger. Everything's fine. I create a new did solve by providing a did string to this did solve. Uh, and then I promote that did as the public did of the wallet. And then if I restart my agent, it's not going to be able to boot uh, because the it doesn't like the fact that there's a did sub that has a a did string that's like I don't know I put did web or something because the user can provide a string for that 
uh, that seems to put the agent in a weird state that is like, this is a did solve, but this, this string is not on the ledger. I cannot find it. And it created some issues. Um, is there, was there a reason why we allow providing a string to did solve as the did? Because other methods like did key, you, you cannot provide that option. It's forbidden. Yeah. Was, was there a reason why did solve? It was, uh, I think we just kind of inherited that from just indie stuff, I think, more than anything else. I don't think it's something that's been used. Um, and mm -hmm. with did indie, like it's it's actively discouraged because we want the the dids themselves to reflect the initial verification key. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh, I, I think it's just so an did it's solve just an actually thing. allows you to name this the did. Yeah. 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 Oh, like I, I can create terrible. a did solve and for the did string put like did web my did no 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 no. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Feels, yeah. feels weird. I think we should probably just remove that as as an option uh, within the API, um, yeah. regardless of what any <clears throat> technical supports on that front. Um, yeah. Okay. That's uh, yeah. I'll, I can okay. take that on. It's a small. Uh, small All part. right. Sorry, we digressed into this one, Jean Philippe. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Uh, first intervention here. So um, it's about the bug uh, 3224, the issue 3224 concerning the support of uh, did indie NIMS in Akapai. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. So MCN is really interested into this and uh, everyone uh, in the Candy Network should be as well. And we are interested into working on this. Uh, I wanted to know if there was anything uh, done yet. I've seen the PR three two five three concerning the the support for uh, did in the uh, in, in bus deployment, like uh, via controller calls. But uh, we're also interested in working on the on making this uh, possible at the provisioning level, uh, so that uh, the NIM yeah. can be generated with the did in the quote unquote formula, which is different from uh, did solve, and and uh, and ideally, I mean, I I, I wanted to uh, to also to know what what your view on this is. Ideally, this would be outsourced in a plugin. Uh, so if we are to support multiple nim slash did types, I mean, it seems it seems the orientation to be like. Uh, to that th those features be in plugins rather than in the Occupy code. Uh, so yeah, I mean, has any work been done in that direction yet? Um, we are an, uh, we are willing to work on this as of now. We would uh, start actively working on this on our okay. side. And uh, we wanted your view on, on the approach to take on this. So there is a PR, but yeah, I guess you looked at it, but... Yeah, there's nothing to do. There's no way to use it. Did indie as the seed parameter. So I guess that's what you're trying to do. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's been no the work PR, on the PR, that. If you're talking about the 3253, it is interesting. I, I have not tried it yet. I want to try it and test it. And and it, this, I, I think it's a good idea that it goes forward as well. But so that the support is complete, indeed, the, 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 the passing the seed should work as well. So, so I, yeah, so you can yeah. pass it. You just can't create a new uh, did from the seed. Um, so the way that PR works is you create the did separately. And then once it's created, then you can start a new agent with the seed. But and, yeah, and promote it as public did. Yeah. So you have to create it and promote it, and then you can start a new agent with it. But you can't just start a new agent from scratch with the did in This is what uh, Patrick has had called the post deployment approach, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You you had a, another issue, Stephen, about uh, seed startup and stuff like. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, this seems like this is like a bit of a hybrid between these two. Yeah. Um, like this seems to be, because I think here we're discussing, like we want to be able to use the did, the seed parameter for other did methods. 
Yeah. Uh, so you could have like seed in the then whatever did parameter is. I, I think the did parameter was more related to trusted web, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I yeah, I think that if you did do work on this, it would use that other PR as well. But yeah, it is different task. If, but I yeah, I didn't know what we wanted to do with the seed and I so I think that brings two questions. Let me try to, to bring this. Um, so first is um, how, what are the provisioning parameters? And, and Jean-Philippe, what I suggest is could you decide what you think is the best way and then propose it and we'll try to get back, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll facilitate to get a, a quick answer for you. Um, yeah, you, you mean further than just like passing uh, dash dash seed? Yeah. So there right now there's just dash dash seed and obviously that is going to that's not enough information to say okay what do you want what type of did do you want out of it yeah. if we're only ever going to support did indie i'd say okay don't we won't we'll drop sob support did sob and and only do indie but we we want to do more so i think it makes sense that we expand that which is where this other pr came from and I don't really know the answer to this because some dids have a ton of information necessary to figure out what a, you know what to add. Um, okay, so first so step I go first from uh, thirty. First step I go from thirty thirty to forty, and I propose uh, the parameters yeah. that could make it work for any did types. At least for did Andy. put your yeah. proposal in for did Andy, and then um, but if you have other ones, yes. So that that how about that? And then the second question you asked that I thought was really good, and I don't know the answer is should did indie be a plugin? I think that's yeah. what you said, right? Um, yeah. Daniel, Patrick, Jamie, Emiliano, thoughts on that? If, if I can just give one more comment before, okay, uh, yeah, I know uh, Northern mm -hmm. Block has worked on the proof of concept to outsource everything related to dids into plugins. Okay, so. They have a they have a, a proof of concept on this that works, but it would have to be industrialized, of course. So okay. let's start the discussion from there. Okay, that's excellent, Colton. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking as we were just uh, talking about this, would this not um, open up the possibility or open up the idea of should we allow the creation of multiple dids with a seed? for each type. Because right now <laughs> seed, I believe is only one did. Yeah. But if we're allowing the creation of different kinds of dids, it only makes sense to me that when you're providing a seed, you provide one for each type that you want to create for. Yeah, so in other words, you're saying you could actually have multiple seeds that you, seeds that you're passing, you're provisioning dids for. Correct. <sighs> This adds a whole other level of things, uh, but it's also something I thought could be interesting is you have a provisioning configuration that you can provide a bunch of different mini profiles. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's like, I'd start probably with just doing the indie, like adding a way to say, if you want this seed to be sub or indie, uh, I think they're both similar enough that it's a good first step. Yeah. Uh, because also like provisioning a bunch of profiles and, you know, what do you do with multi-tenants agent and all this, like it can, you know, there's can be a lot of things to consider. So I think once, you know, starting with having seed parameter to provide a indie method to go with it, uh, the did method being yeah. proper yeah. indie is a good start and then we can expand from there. Okay. Wade? Can't hear you. Okay, helps if I take myself off mute. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on Colton's um, comment about the seed. So this is sort of a concern and a comment. Um, one, having one seed developing multiple bids, a uh, little bit of a potential of a security concern because if you've got one one seed is compromised, then you've got multiple dids, although they are technically the same did um, affected. 
at the Hold same on, time. One comment it, quickly there. I, yeah. I think he was saying multiple seeds, one for each did versus one seed, multiple dids. Correct. I was talking about the idea of allowing the seed parameter to be specified multiple times instead of only once. Okay, perfect. Sorry, totally missed that point. Okay, Jean-Philippe. Yeah, so so what I understood also from this is that we pass we could pass the, the seed argument multiple times, and for each seed argument, there would be uh, a, a NIM created uh, and and in yes. that sense, in that sense, that it, it seems logic to me, like the, mm -hmm. that we could pass multiple seed arguments. But also, if we go further and we answer the first question, uh, you asked Stefan, mm -hmm. um, the 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 seed argument as of now represents a, a sub nim. So so it makes sense that we could add another like seed, did seed, did seed argument, and the and the. And 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 a, a, a sub seed argument and and the sub seed argument would be a would yeah. be the same thing as seed basically. Yes. And, and then there would be uh, in the seed that would be another argument that we pass, and then eventually we, we would be able to pass that argument multiple times to have multiple nims. Right. And if we were to externalize this into plugins, then it would be easy because the parameters would be independent. Yeah. Is everyone okay with this idea? Oh, shoot, didn't work. There we go. All right, uh, I could document this in 232.40. Perfect. And, uh, and if you guys are uh, open to this, uh, I, I could be starting to work on the, the proposal. Excellent. Um, notice Daniel's comment. I think he's right there. Um, we'll stick to dids versus nims and try to eliminate nim from the uh, from the code base. I, I was actually almost saying the opposite. Things oh. that we call dids today that are actually just unpublished nims. I, I wonder if it would be better for us to just call them nims and manage oh. the nims directly um, for like sort of an indie stuff. Uh, but yeah. Okay, but then, but then, when we are talking about real dids, we call them dids. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Okay, we're over time. Excellent meeting, uh, Jean Philippe. I should have let you go first on that, and we would have probably been better off. But okay, we uh, went a little over, but that's good. And excellent meeting, and lots covered. Thanks. Take care, all. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.